Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I have um, knitting. We're gonna talk knitting. So if you're here for sewing content only, um, I totally understand. There's gonna be some fantastic sewing content on Friday. You don't wanna miss it. I can't talk about it yet, but I am working on some of my own fall sewing and I am adapting a pair of pants to be waist fluctuating friendly. And it worked and they're wonderful. <laughs> so I'm gonna be showing you how I did that um, to this pattern. And yes, I will. can't tell you more until Friday, but Friday is gonna be a good day. So if you're here only for sewing content, definitely head over, um, come back on Friday, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because we've got a really good video that's coming up on Friday. Very excited about it. <laughs> okay, but I wanted to talk about knitting for a couple of reasons today. Number one, um, I mean, I have not touched my knitting needles all summer, which is not atypical for me. Um, I just find, I don't know, then in the summer months, I guess I'm just not as apt to pick up my needles. Um, there's just less like cozy nights sitting watching TV. You know, I don't really watch a lot of TV in the summer. Um, we're just like out doing things. And um, yeah, I just, it's just something that doesn't get done as much as it does in the fall, winter, spring. <laughs> so number one, we're starting to transition into, I mean, I say that it's like 800 degrees outside right now. Um, but eventually, you know, school's back in, you know, back in session and we will be getting into the cooler, cooler weather here soon. So um, I want to finish what I currently have on my needles. and I'll, t I'll just briefly touch on that. And then I've got some other fun plans that I just wanted to go with through with you. And I did something really fun this past weekend and I wanna to talk to you guys about it as well. So um, let's dig in really quick. I will, um, let's talk about some yarn and patterns and stuff like that. And then um, we'll all get into what I did this past weekend. Okay, so first things first, I have had um, this um, ivory, this is the lace weight. Um, it's a lace weight and a fingering weight and I'm making a sweater vest from Petite Knits. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Um, and I think we're still good. <laughs> I have about um, a third of the back done and it's one of those that I think I will knit up in no time. I just need to actually sit down a few nights, you know, and really just get it done. So um, yeah. That was supposed to be in my spring capsule and then knitting just stopped. So I do still have that on my knitting needles right now. So that is definitely going to be um, finished up. But then as soon as that is finished, which hopefully is gonna be here really soon. Okay, the wonderful, wonderful Carol from um, Woolen Frog is the name of her new shop, but she's also Rave Stitches on Etsy. Um, she does hand dyed yarn and um, she's in Canada and she reached out to me and sent me um, some hand dyed yarn to do some socks and it is gorgeous. But I wanted to show you everything she sent me. She sent me this beautiful little card, the nicest little note. So nice, Carol. Um, and then a little tester of this opal um, pullover and sock wool, just like a little, I love when they send you the little, um, like examples of other stuff and that color is so much fun. So I might have to get some of that. It looks like it's made in Germany here, but it looks like it's, um, I'm just gonna guess here, 75% wool and probably 25% nylon is my guess, um, cause it is sock wool, but oh my gosh, it's a cute little sample there. Um, a, she sewed me a couple of things, so we have to show this. This beautiful little knitting bag, or yeah, I would use it as a knitting bag. It's got a little pocket on the inside, just like a little project bag, which will be perfect for what I'm gonna show you here next. So cute, um, look at the little campers on there. Just a really cute little project bag. So excited about that. Again, she's in Canada. Look at this adorable little quilted mat that she made. Is that not the cutest? I just love it. I, I just love how small YouTube makes the world and just the internet makes the world. That's one of my favorite things, being able to meet people and talk to people from different countries. It just makes me, I, and the few of you that have sent me like a little something in the mail, it just makes my day when I get something from a different country. Just, I don't know, I just like having a pin pal. <laughs> But anyway, so cute, so cute, Carol. But here is the piece de resistance. Look at this wool. Hold on, let me separate it so you can really, and she hand dyed this stuff. So we've got the main attraction here. 
Again, she's just opened a brick and mortar store called Wool and Frog, and they have a website, but she said a lot of her hand dyed stuff is still in her Etsy shop. So I'm gonna link them both down below if you wanna go take a look at everything. Look at that. So this is fingering weight, um, sock weight wool. Um, 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 let's see. It's an 80-23 ply. Yeah, I, it's gorgeous. I mean, the colors in this, I mean, do you look at the teal and stuff? Okay, so she sent me this, so beautiful. But look what she sent also. This is a merino nylon 80-20 um, fingering that for the toe, to go with it, like for the toe and the top of the sock. Look how well. Aren't those gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. I am such a sucker for hand dyed yarn. It is so beautiful and it makes me so happy when I'm knitting it up. Even the solid stuff because there's variations in it. I just love seeing it become a fabric. It makes me so happy. So this is gonna go into my little project bag here and um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a pair of socks this winter. Send me, put comments down below. For those of you that knit, what is your favorite sock pattern? Um, I've made socks before quite a few times. Um, I, in the past, have made them mostly on double pointed needles, although I have made them on circulars doing magic loop before, which I think I prefer. Um, but yeah, let me know down below. What is your favorite fun sock pattern um, where I can use my new little goodies? Um, I've also knitted two socks at once, although that makes stresses me out a little bit. I think I <laughs> would rather just do one sock and then the next. <laughs> but um, I don't know, maybe I'll get brave again and try it again. But yes, send me your favorite sock, knitting sock, um, I almost said recipes, patterns, <laughs> uh, so that I've got a good pair of socks for this winter. So that is what Carol sent me. Again, I'm gonna link down, her stuff is, hand dyed stuff is just really gorgeous. And again, she's got a brand new brick and mortar, so definitely go support Carol. Um, go have a look at some of the beautiful stuff she's got, especially if you're in Canada, but also, I mean, anywhere. Okay, so that's gonna be next, as soon as my um, sweater vest gets off. And then these other two you have seen. It's just that I really need to get on them now. So the first one is this ridiculous yarn that I bought for my daughter. Um, and now that she's had her colors done, this is all like pretty perfect. I mean, there is, or not orange, but it's like a marigold color that's not one of her colors. But I think that when I'm knitting it with this lavender, it's gonna pale that out and probably make it more of her yellow that she can wear anyway. Um, but yeah, the rest of these colors are all like, even the charcoal gray flecks and stuff. I'm very excited about this. And I may do the No Frills sweater by Petite Knits. That's, this is the same combination I made my No Frills sweater. Um, but I'm gonna let her pick um, because this is really nice yarn and I wanna make sure she wears it. So I'm sure it'll be something cropped. Um, but yes, we're gonna do the, the double knitting on that one. And then, so that will be after my socks. And this actually may go on while my socks are going on. My, I love socks because they're so easily transported. So that's easy when I'm sitting waiting for soccer games because I'm always there like my husband's one of the coaches and so we're there super early all the time. Um, you know, when we're traveling to different soccer games, like there's just a lot as a parent <laughs> where you find yourself sitting and waiting to pick people up, to just whatever. So um, those are gonna be my traveling project for this fall. And then after I finish my daughter's sweater, which I would, it's not gonna get done by her birthday. Her birthday's at the end of September, maybe Christmas. <laughs> we'll go with Christmas. But as soon as I'm done with hers, I've also got some fingering weight and um, mohair lace weight from um, Miss Babs Yarn. Um, that I, that it's also hand dyed, that I bought, gosh, last Christmas. And um, I bought this and I bought some other yarn that I made my daughter's other sweater knitted for her um, already. But I wanna do the April cardigan from um, Petite Knits. So those, that's kind of what I've got planned. And again, I'm ready to put things back on my needles. I was so good this weekend, guys, because I went down to, um, so I live in the Indianapolis area, but down south of Indianapolis, there is an area called Brown County, which is gorgeous in the fall, but they have um, Nashville down there, Nashville, Indiana, is very um, artsy community. Like they've got just a lot of, it's a really cool little town. And uh, they have a yarn shop down there called the Clay Pearl, and she did a fiber arts retreat weekend this past weekend. Um, my good friend Jenny, that you all have met, my thrifting buddy Jenny, um, we just decided on a whim. She's because she has a, um, a house down there, um, a lake home that they've got down there. Um, so she had seen the flyer, and she it's just an hour and a half south of us. Um, 
where I live, and she's like, let's go down there and do this fiber arts retreat weekend, um, and we can take a spinning class. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds so impractical and fun, and I'm in. <laughs> So we went to the, it's the very first fiber arts retreat that they've done down there. And oh my gosh, guys, it was so much fun. So I, we took a spinning class. There were three different sessions that you could pick from, but there were a couple classes that if you took them, it took all three sessions and the spinning was one of them. So um, the Friday night we learned how to spin on a spindle, like um, just a hanging, I'll pull it out here, trying to hook everything. Just a little spindle here, got a little hook. Um, we learned how to do that so that we kind of learned the basics of like, how you take roving and turn it into yarn. And then um, the next day we learned how to use the spinning wheels, which was, I mean, I need a spinning wheel now, clearly. <laughs> if anyone has any, they're so expensive. And I just kept thinking to myself, surely there has to be a market out there for um, used spinning wheels. I mean, the technology's not changed on them. So um, does anyone have any recommendations of where um, I could get a used spinning wheel that's not, um, you know, I don't need a $700 one because um, we did get on our Facebook marketplace, Jenny and I did, and we were looking a little bit, um, and I understand that there's definitely quality. Obviously, we're just starting out, but um, we're very, I think that would be so much fun this winter just to sit and do a spinning wheel. I really preferred the two foot treadle as opposed to just the one. Um, there was the one I was using was an Ashford and it was the Joy, I believe. So it was smaller, but it was two and then the wheel sat like right in front of me as opposed to your standard, like your, um, what you think of like spinning wheel where the wheel's kind of over here to the side and then you're working over here. I'm not great at it, but <laughs> I think it's one of those things that I just have to get a feel for. So I, um, we were given just plain white uh, roving to use to um, just, uh, not, I mean it's white, but it was just raw, fresh, you know, from the sheep. Um, but it was kind of, I mean, it was boring. So I splurged the $20 and got some hand dyed roving. Look at this. I mean, this is a whole new obsession. This takes yarn and like goes up a notch, right? Like now I have roving that I need to collect. <laughs> it's never ending. Um, but I did sp splurge and um, buy a little bit. And guys, I made yarn. It is not pretty. We're gonna call this art yarn. Look how chunky it is. It is, it could not be more inconsistent <laughs> with the width if I had tried. So um, actually, I have actually purchased yarn kind of like this that was like this on purpose and made a really fun chunky cowl for um, knitted one up for my mother-in-law. But what's also funny is that this took us two days to make and Jenny was saying, she's like, oh, and we didn't even knit enough to like make anything out of it. <laughs> like there's not enough here. There's not enough yardage here for me to make anything out of it. But <laughs> I could do like a fun stripe in a hat or like on a sweater, or it could definitely be an accent on something. And so it will get used as an accent on something. I just hope it holds up, to be honest. Um, but I, I can, I could definitely tell, you know, further, the further I got that I was improving with each spool that I would fill. So um, unfortunately, when we went to ply everything together, um, I had to use the crappy stuff from the beginning. And so, I mean, look how chunky some of this is. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, I made yarn. I felt very accomplished. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed learning a new skill and I could totally see how that would be very addictive. And I am gonna play around. She recommended you know, we need to practice about 15 minutes a day with our spindles just so we can get the drafting, drifting, drafting, the drafting down where you're pulling apart the, the um, and twisting as it twists, um, kind of get that down in your brain. But I think that I might want, if I can find a good priced spinning wheel that is not, you know, that's, you know, I don't want to buy something that's junky because I think that you definitely can get, it's much less frustrating if you have the best equipment that you can afford kind of type thing or the best materials you can afford. Um, I find that with knitting, um, with sewing, you know, the best fabric I can afford. It's just a much more pleasurable um, process. Things just, you have less frustrations and so you're more apt to, to keep practicing and keep doing it. Um, but I just don't have it in the budget to spend anything like what I know a really nice brand new spinning wheel costs. But I just feel like there has to be a market out there of um, 
you know, people that have taken it up and then decided that, that this wasn't something they wanted to do or inherited one or, um, yeah, or cleaning out, you know, mom or grandma's, you know, attic or whatever and find one and, you know, don't want it. But let me know if anyone has a good source for some group or something that might be selling spinning wheels because now I have a new obsession. But I am going to be practicing with my spindle. Okay, so there we have it. <laughs> and I know you guys, I can share this with you all because I know that you will ooh and ah over a new craft with me. It's always, it's just fascinating, I think, as someone who knits or uses any kind of fiber, um, it's just fascinating, I, I think, to know where it came from. I mean, obviously, you can go way back to, you know, the alpacas and the sheep where it came from and how they're sheared and then how the fleeces process and carded and combed and all that kind of stuff to get it to the roving stage and then, you know, dyeing it. I mean, it's a slippery slope. I can see where, um, you know, the next thing I know, I've got a farm out in the middle of nowhere and I'm raising alpaca and some sheep. <laughs> Very slippery slope, but I do find it fascinating to really get back to exactly where your things come from. Um, I just find it, you know, tan takes everything full circle and makes you, really makes you appreciate the cost for fine wool and really good wool, especially if you're buying anything that is hand spun, because holy moly is it a lot of work. <laughs> But again, it's very meditative, very um, zen. Um, you just kind of get into a, a, I don't know, like a zone kind of. It reminds me of like if I'm sitting there knitting and I'm just doing like stockinette stitch where it's like mindless and I can just go, but it's something that I'm doing and creating, but it's still allowing my brain a chance to like rest. That's how I felt about spinning. Um, it was very, very similar to that and I would love to continue doing it, so. Anyway, that's kind of what I've got going on right now. And I've talked to you guys now for 17 minutes. So, <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have for today. Again, I'm going to link Carol's shops down below. If you are in the um, market for some uh, hand dyed wool, because we are coming in, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, going into that season of a lot of knitting and, um, yeah, getting into all the cozy crafts again. Okay, guys, that's all I have for today. Again, hit that subscri subscription button if you have not already. I've got a really good video coming out on uh, Friday because I know a lot of you, um, just from the comments, also struggle with uh, wildly fl fluctuating waist from whatever reason, you know, whether that be medical or just your weight fluctuates a lot, menopause, whatever. Um, but I've got a fun hack that worked. <laughs> for a pair of waisted pants that I've turned into fluctuating waist pants. I mean, it's not nothing revolutionary. It was basically just elastic. But I'm going to show you exactly how I modified the pattern to um, include the elastic in the back and, um, yeah, and how they're really working for me, and I don't feel frumpy in them. So that's also a big plus. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I've got for today. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you on Friday. Bye.